Hi, welcome to the HPLM Solid Edge Tool Tips. I'd just like to show you the main tool of the Siemens Solid Edge Synchronous Technology, the steering wheel. The steering wheel is the tool we use to modify the faces of solids in the synchronous environment. The way we do that is simply to place our cursor over our face and click and you'll see how a control arrow appears. I can click on that control arrow and move that face. No playing around with sketches or anything like that. Now you'll see that the full steering wheel has appeared, and that's made up of our primary axis, secondary axis, origin, torus, cardinal points, and control knobs. So to move the uh, arrow to an offset, move the face to an offset distance away from something. What I need to do before I click is to press shift and then click. That will allow me to move off uh, to a, an offset distance. Type in a value. And I can click on my dis uh, destination point. And you'll see how that specifies an offset distance. Now I'd like to show you how to rotate a face. So again we select the face we want to rotate and I'm going to move my arrow to the edge that I want. I wish to rotate around. And you see how the, uh, the steering wheel reorientates depending on where it is placed. So I'm going to leave it on that edge with the secondary axis running perfectly along that edge. And you can see that I can, as I click on the torus, I can rotate that face by moving my cursor around. And I can also specify a particular angle by just typing the value in. Now, if I wanted to rotate around that midline, what I would need to do again is to select that face, move my steering wheel to the midpoint, and click to place it. Now, if I uh, if I move, click on that torus now, it goes in the wrong direction. So what I'm going to want to do is actually switch the direction. And the way I do that is to press Shift and click on the blue tool plane. That switches it around. Now I can click on my torus. It rotates exactly how I intended. Okay, moving connected faces example this face is connected to these faces either side so normally when I move it it will decrease and increase in area okay now if I choose my tip option that will maintain the area the size of that front face and the side faces will adjust accordingly and I've also got what we call the lift option where the, all the faces stay the same size but move relative to one another, like so. If I wanted to move more than one face at a time, what I need to do is press space. And that will allow me to add faces to my selection set. I can then move my steering wheel wherever I like and move all those faces in one go. Uh, another method of selecting multiple faces would be just to call, draw a crossing window. Again, move the steering wheel like so. Okay, now I'm going to move, show you how to move a body around in the part environment. Now, to do that, what I can do is take my cursor, draw a crossing window, and that selects the surfaces that I intend to move. Now uh, what I want to do is rotate this one up 90 degrees and then I'm going to move it down onto this top surface. So as before I can use my torus to rotate the object. Type in a value that will reorient the object, the faces. And now I wish to move the object down onto that top face in, in one smooth movement. And the way I'm going to do that is to first of all switch off my live rules 
our rules will be covered in a, a future uh, video. I'm going to click on the primary knob, which allows me to move it in 3D space, and I'm going to point it at the corner of my existing solid, like so. Now to move my object, as before, click on my primary arrow, and that allows me to move it down onto that point. Once it's there, what I want, would like to do is to move it around in uh, in two dimensions, not in three. So the way I can do that, move my steering wheel onto the bottom surface, and I'm going to reorientate it so that my tool plane is parallel to my main plane. Now, when I click on the tool plane, it allows me to move my object always in 2D, like so. Now I want to move my body in uh, small, accurate movements. I can do that by clicking on my arrows, and as before, moving it. As I was moving a face, I can move a whole set of faces, so I can specify a distance like so. If I want to change the direction that I move, I just click on what we call our cardinal points, and I can move forwards and backwards, like so. If I want to move at an angle, what I need to do is hover over the torus and press shift, and that will let me specify an angle. So, for example, if I want to make that 45, click to choose that angle and I can move my object at that angle like so a specific distance the secondary axis allows me to move my object up and down at right angles to my tool plane What I need to do is press control before I click on my primary knob and that allows a normal rotation to that axis. So for example if I specify 45 degrees at that point, click to define it, then I can move up at that angle at a specified distance. Okay, I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about the live section command. Uh, it's a great way of making changes to the to the solid as if it were a 2D sketch without ha actually having to create the 2D sketch. So our live section command is up here and we choose a face and we can position our live section like so. Now to uh, make it easier to see and work with the live section, we I, I can turn off the solid itself by turning off the design body, and that leaves me just the live section. So I could take that live section, I could start to modify it as if it were a 2D sketch. Turning back. Turning the design body back on shows that, that it uh, has updated the solid shape. I'm going to turn it off again and I'm going to draw a cutout on my live section. So it, it's just like I was working on a 2D sketch. So what I do is I lock to that plane and I can start drawing. So, select that region and extend it through like that. And turning my design body back on shows that I've created a cutout. Once I've finished with my live section, all I need to do is turn it off in the Pathfinder. To learn more about SolidEdge tools, 
just refer to the online tutorials which can be found by clicking here and clicking here for the online and clicking here for the built-in tutorials. If you prefer a classroom environment for your CAD training, do contact EdgePLM and speak to the training manager.